Okay, on the bench here we have a Galaxy DX95, the hell is this, a T2. Uh, don't usually work on a lot of radios like this, mainly on the, the old classics, but occasionally I get somebody ask me if I do, you know, work on these, and so it's on the bench. The only thing they wanted done to this was an alignment. Um, now this is one of the high power radios, so it's a single final on the radio itself, but it has a factory built-in amplifier in the bottom of it with the two transistors. I think they're like, oh, hell, I don't even remember what the hell, what the, well, hell, I can look at the schematic here. I can tell you in just a second. Uh, let's see, what the hell's the amp schematic? Yeah, it's got two SC2290s, has two of them in it. Um, now when I first got this, it had, uh, AM was, transmit was, uh, modulation was distorted, um, did find the AMC control was now surprisingly I'm, and I'll go into that uh, it does look like it was peak and tuned did not have a proper transceiver alignment done um, and it was probably set up for an AMer because sideband on this was it was un, un, unintelligible on a receiving radio oh my god it was so distorted it's uh, <laughs> it was just <laughs> that's about what you heard on the receiving radio um, so, and they had the, because uh, when you align the trans, the, the transmit circuit on this in the beginning stages of it where you, you're peaking all the transformers, um, once you get done in AM, you're supposed to switch back to, you're supposed to switch to sideband mode and then readjust certain portions for least amount of distortion on sideband. And then there's also an adjustment in these for the APC. Uh, voltage. You're supposed to set that at, uh, I think it's 8.5 volts. It was set at something like 13.2. So yeah, actually, once I got both of those adjust adjusted properly, the ALC circuit was darn close to being okay. Um, it's just they had the rest of it so far cranked up. Like I said, I get the feeling it was peaked to be a AM radio. But the surprisingly, the uh, you know since it seems to be have been peaked for an AM radio, the modulation limiter was still in the radio, and it still is. Um, so now it's, but the AMC circuit is now properly adjusted. Um, so it's had its alignment done. Um, one of the main reasons I don't like these radios, I'm an old classics guy. Just give me a factory FCC, you know, legal radio. It's all I need. Four watts on AM, 12 on sideband. Man, you can talk the world with one of those radios. But, uh, hey, this is your, your bag. Have at it. Main thing I hate about radios like this is, where's the amplifier? On the bottom of the radio. It makes it a useless sideband radio because as soon as that thing gets hot, where's the heat going to go? Straight up into the radio. Your frequency is going to drift. If you don't talk for a while, it's going to cool down. Your frequency is going to drift. So you're going to spend all damn day adjusting a clarifier, but it's neither here nor there. Um, now, I did a transceiver alignment on it, and the last thing I do every time I do a transceiver alignment is... Uh, give it a, a look on the spectrum analyzer. And when I put it on the spectrum analyzer, uh, I normally just narrow in on 54 megahertz to make sure that there's, you know, it doesn't have an excessive, because uh, it's actually not adjustable in this. Um, they, they, for better or worse, actually, I guess it's good. They did away with the, the tunable coils on those, the 54 megahertz trap circuit, because people would adjust those for peak power, not knowing that what they were doing was it was just increasing the output power in a 54 megahertz band. Um, so by them just using set coils, people didn't know, so they, there's no screws to turn. Um, and it does have a small 54 megahertz spike, but like I say, it's, it does have an amplifier, so that's going to have more than a normal radio. But, oh my god, the IMD products on this. Um, like I say, it's not a it's not a second harmonic. It's you know it's going to be third order products, so it's IMD products, um, and it's not coming from inside the radio itself. Uh, I did some sniffing around internally in the radio, and the output at the basically the input of the amplifier circuit looks fine, but after the amplifier and the amplifier that has a little cover over it on the inside, I can see where someone had had the cover off because the Loctite was broken loose on all the screw heads, so I did take the cover off and looked at it, and it does not look like the amplifier circuit was ever uh, tinkered with, so I put the cover back on. But what I'm wondering is, because like I say, I don't normally work on these types of radios, um, 
So any techs out there, now you're going to have to have a spectrum analyzer, honestly, to answer my question. Um, but if you do, do these normally have a lot of uh, third order or IMD intermodulation distortion? Because this one sure in the hell does. So I have it hooked up to this big coax cable right here is hooked up to two high power 30 dB attenuators in series for a total of 60 dB attenuation. Um, the spectrum analyzer reference offset has already been set to that. So get set up here so you can see the screen. Okay, so I currently have it set. You can see the start frequency is 0 megahertz, so the left side of the screen is 0, and stop frequency is 60 megahertz. And I have the... Now this has variable power, so I'm actually going to start out with the variable power turned down the whole way. Uh, manufacturer's spec for only alignment is 10 watts low and 40 watts on uh, high. So, there you go. So, here's our fundamental frequency. Peak can see that's at 27.2 and if I turn the power up ooh boy them and third order harmonics man they really start coming up out of the mud um, now this is our 54 megahertz uh, second harmonic so that's kind of to be expected especially after it's gone through an you know a, a two transistor amplifier you're gonna see some that which actually that's not that bad considering it's gone after the amplifier but uh, all this other trash, holy smokes. So, you know, we've got, let's go to peak. So, we've got a peak at 32.1 megahertz. Another one, a little small one there at 37.9. We go back to the left. There's back to the fundamental. And there's 21.9 megahertz. There's one at 16 megahertz. There's one at 11.3 megahertz. And there's even another one at 4.9 megahertz. So, yeah. That's, <laughs> like I say, 4.9, uh, 11.4. Next one is 16.2. And the next one there is 22.1. And then... Another one there at 32.2. And yeah, another small one here. I got the automatic peak won't find that one. Another one here right around 38.1. Now I guess on the bright side, um, if you were watching, I mean what I was looking at was actually looking at those frequencies. Luckily, none of that IMD uh, products happened to fall in any of the ham bands, thank God. So, my question is, is that normal? If you have a spectrum analyzer and you normally work on these radios, uh, is that what you normally see? I'd be interested to know, because like I say, I don't normally work on these radios. The camera ever comes back in focus. Focus. Focus, 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 focus. There we go. <laughs> um, is that what you normally see? Because, uh, to me, that's unacceptable. Um, it's one of the main reasons I don't like working on radios like this is because they're they're basically building a splatter box right into them. Um, so, if anybody has any comments on that, uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts.